so I'm not going through that. Um, okay, so let me show you one picture of this talk. So what we are going to discuss is trade-offs between uh, the time and approximation factor we can get for um, solving, for finding short vectors in ideal lattices. I'm going to define everything later. Let me just present you the big picture. So if you don't care about ideal lattices, if you want an algorithm for any lattice, you have the BKT algorithm on the left, which gives you some trade-offs. If you restrict yourself to ideal lattices, you have a CDW algorithm, which improves upon the BKD algorithm in the quantum setting. And what I want to discuss in this talk is a kind of an extension of the CDW algorithm, where we obtain all the trade-offs in the quantum setting and some improvement also in the classical setting. And so yeah, I should mention that the picture on the right is only for prime power cyclotomic fields, so we can extend it to other fields, but the picture is slightly different. Okay, so let me start with defining what I'm going to uh, talk about. So um, a lattice is a vector space, kind of a vector space, a discrete vector space over Z. And it's represented by bases. So here is the lattice in dimension two. And the points of the lattice are integer linear combination of the vector of the bases. So you have an example of a lattice with two different bases. Okay, so SVP stands for shortest vector problem. And it's the problem given a basis of a lattice to find a shortest non-zero vector of the lattice, and I'm going to write lambda one, the Euclidean norm of the shortest of a shortest vector. So I'm going to be interested in the approximation variant of this problem, where I just want to find a vector uh, which is at most, let's say, for instance, two times lambda one, or some approximation factor times the length of the shortest vector. Uh, I'm also going to discuss about CVP. So CVP stands for closest vector problem. And it's given a target in the real space spanned by the lattice. We want to find the point of the lattice which is the closest possible to the target. And again, we have an approximation variant of this problem where we just want to find a point at some distance of the target. OK. So um, why do we care about uh, SVP and CVP in lattices? It's because when you want small approximation factor, it's conjectured to be hard even in a quantum setting. And so it can be used to build cryptographic primitives. And so let me recall you what I've shown in the first slide. So if we want an algorithm that works for any lattice, for arbitrary lattice, then we have the, BK the best asymptotic algorithm is the BKZ algorithm. And so what you can have is two to the n approximation factor in polynomial time, or polynomial approximation factor in two to the n time, and all the trade-offs in between. So now the problem, if you use SVP and CVP, is usually the schemes that are built on these problems are not very efficient, in particular because you have to store a matrix and things like that. And so in order to improve efficiency, um, we can use structured lattices. And so an example of such structured lattices are ideal lattices. So I'm going to define uh, more precisely what's there uh, in a few slides. But let's think for the moment as, uh, of ideal lattices as structured lattices. And so now the question is, if we want to do cryptography on ideal lattices, then is the problem of finding short vectors still hard when we restrict ourselves to ideal lattices? So this question was. Uh, partially answered by Kramer, Duka, Vesolovsky at Eurocrypt 2017. And so they showed that in a quantum setting, we can do better than the BKZ algorithm. We can find a 2 to the square root 10 approximation factor of the smallest uh, non-zero vector of the lattice in, class in polynomial quantum time. So this is something we don't know how to do for general, general lattices. So the algorithm is heuristics, and it works for prime power cyclotomic fields. And so what I'm going to present in this talk is uh, an extension of the CDW algorithm where so we achieve all the trade-offs in the quantum setting, so there is not just a drop at 2 to the square root n approximation factor. And we also have some improvement in the classical setting. So again, the algorithm is heuristic. Uh, so here is a, um, the picture Sorry for, um, for prime power cyclotomic fields, but it works for any number of fields, and it's slightly different. And so the main difference is that we require a preprocessing which is exponentially large. So we require to first precompute something that depends only on the ring, and then this is the query phase of uh, finding short vectors in ideal in this ring. 
Um, OK, so let me already tell you about uh, the impact of uh, what you should remember of the result. So it's just a theoretical result, meaning that OK, OK. It seems that um, it might be easier to find short vectors in ideal lattices than in arbitrary lattices. Because even, I mean, even if with this preprocessing, we don't know how to do better than the BKZ algorithm in, uh, for general lattices. But for ideal lattices, we, we have some improvement. But it's absolutely not a practical algorithm. So there are two reasons for which it, I mean, it cannot be used to impact any concrete uh, schemes. The first one is the exponential preprocessing, which even if you have to do it only once, it's still exponential. And the second reason is that usually schemes are not, um, so they are shown to be harder to break than breaking the ring LWE problem, which is itself harder to solve than finding short vectors in ideal lattices. But we don't have the reverse direction. So it could be that it's easy to solve, uh, to find short vectors in ideal lattices, but the ring LWE problem could still be hard to solve. So even if we had a classical polynomial time algorithm for ideal SVP, this would impact very few cryptographic schemes. OK, so let me give you uh, some details about the algorithm. So I'm first going to define, because I'm speaking of ideal lattices, so I'm first going to define what it is. And then I will go to the details. OK, so for simplicity in this talk, I'm going to restrict myself to uh, a ring which is uh, cyclotomic ring of power of two, uh, yeah, power of two cyclotomic ring, so z of x mod x to the n plus one. And so I need two algebraic definition before going further. So units in the ring are elements that can be multiplied by another element of the ring so that the product is one. So if you think of z, the simplest ring maybe, so you have two units, one and minus one. So I'm also going to present to use the algorithm only for principal ideal. So in the talk, when I say ideal, I'm just meaning principal ideal. And this is the set of all multiples of some element in the ring. So again, in Z, if you look at the set of all even numbers, that's an ideal generated by two. And we know that the generators of an ideal, they are exactly the multiples of one of the generators by all the units. So in Z, the generators of the set of even numbers are two and minus two. And that's all. So that's all we are going to need for algebraic definition. Um, so let me tell you, so I've defined what is a, an ideal. And what does it mean finding short vectors in an ideal? It means, so we are going to see the ideal as a lattice. So it's done for those of you who know using a Minkowski embedding. But for simplicity here, I'm going to present it with a canonical embedding, the, sorry, coefficient embedding. So. Um, the ring R, we can see it as a set of polynomials with integer coefficient of degree n minus 1. And so we can see this polynomial of degree n minus 1 as a vector of dimension n with integer coefficient. And so this gives us a mapping, uh, an isomorphism between the ring and the n. And the n is a lattice. I mean, it's a simple lattice. Um, so here is an example in dimension 2. So R is Z2. And now an ideal is a subset of the ring which is stable by addition and subtraction. So it's a sub lattice of the lattice R. And so we can, def uh, we can find the basis of the ideal and we can see it as a lattice. So now I can give you the precise definition of what I want to do. So I'm given a basis of uh, an ideal when I see it as a lattice. And I have some parameter alpha between 0 and 1. And what I want to do is to find an element in my ideal which is non zero and whose Euclidean norm is at most 2 to the n to the alpha times larger than the smallest element of the ideal. And so again, we want to do better than the BKZ algorithm. We want to use the structure of the lattice to, to do better. OK, so let me first present you the CDPR algorithm by Kramer, Duca, Piker, Trigef. Um, so I've told you at the beginning that CDW algorithm is uh, this 2 to the square root 10 approximation factor in quantum polynomial time. So here, because I'm focusing only on principal ideals, this is the CDP algorithm. CDW is just an extension to any ideals. OK, so um, I'm going to use a very useful tool for th describing this algorithm and the next one, which is the log function. So log with a capital L. 
is a function that goes from my ring to the real to the end. And you can think of it as just taking the logarithm of each coordinate of my vector. And so I'm also going to define one. This is a vector with only one coordinate, and h is the hyperplane orthogonal to one. So I'm going to give you uh, some properties about this log. You will have to trust me. Um, some are more uh, natural than others. So whenever I take an element in my ring and I consider its log, I'm going to decompose it as some vector collinear to one and some vector in the space capital H. So now if I'm looking at the element, the logarithm of the element of my ring, they are all, they all are on um, a half space, so here on the top right part of the line. So this is something, I mean, this is a property, first property. The second property is the elements that are on H, we know them, that's the unit. So all the units are on H, and all the elements on H are units. And it's not just a random set, it's a lattice, so which is called the log unit lattice. So when I take the logarithm of the unit, I get uh, a lattice on H, in H. Okay, some other property which may be more natural is the logarithm is additive, so logarithm of a product is the sum of the log. And so because I'm interested in short vectors in the real space and not in the log space, so I need the link between the two, and again, it's still it's natural, so the Euclidean norm of my vector in the real space is roughly 2 to the infinity norm in the log space of the log. Okay, so now I'm going to use this logarithm function to describe the CDPR algorithm. So first observation is, so let's look at log of the elements of my ideal. So remember, so I have log of G, one of the generators, and because it's additive and all the points are on the right of H on some uh, half space, then they are all above the uh, line log G plus capital H. And the elements that are on the line log G plus capital H, they are exactly log G plus log of a unit, so log G times a unit, which is log of a generator of the ideal. So on my line, um, log, and sorry, on the line H plus log G, I get all the algorithm of the units of the generators, sorry, of the ideal. And so, okay, so I have the point of uh, the logarithm of the ideal, and now I want, I would like to find the smallest one. So the smallest I can do is this star, which is at the intersection between log g plus h and the one axis. It's the smallest point that is on the right of log g plus h. And so this is the one I would like to, to reach. So maybe this one is not in the ideal, but I want to find the point of the ideal, which is the closest to this star. And so a good candidate for this is a generator, because the generators are already on the good line, and we just want to find the one which is the closest possible to the one axis. So that's um, how the CDP algorithm works. So first thing is we are going to compute a generator, and we want to then find the best generator. So OK, let's first start by computing a generator. This is previous work. This can be done in quantum polynomial time or 2 to the square root 10 classical time. So we get a generator which, is, uh, which will be usually large. And now we, want, we would like to find the generator which is the closest possible to the one axis. And so how do we do that? We are going to project log of g1 on h. And then we will solve a closest vector problem uh, with the lattice lambda finding the closest unit, and then we just remove it from log g1, and we get the best generator for the ideal. So now we have two questions here. The first one is, so I've told you that finding closest vector, solving closest vector problem is a hard problem, so how do we do that? And the second one is, how good is the approximation factor I get? So the answer to both questions was given so in the CDP algorithm, and what they did is they exhibited a good basis of the log unit lattice. So the basis they exhibit is somehow orthogonal. So solving the CVP problem in an orthogonal basis is just rounding each, co each coordinate. So this can be done in polynomial time. And they also show that the distance between two consecutive right points is roughly square root n. So the um, distance between my best generator and the star will be at most square root n, and because I'm in the log space, it means that when I go back to the real space, I get an approximation factor 2 to the square root n. And so that's how we can obtain a 2 to the square root n approximation factor in polynomial quantum time.
So now let me explain to you what we did in order to try to obtain all the trade-offs between uh, these, yeah, all the trade-offs. So the first thing to observe is usually um, when we take the log of a generator at random, it will fall between, I mean, at distance square root 10 over 2 of any good, any unit. So most of the time, the best generator will be a 2 to the square root 10 over 2 approximation factor of the smallest element of the ideal. And so we cannot do better than 2 to the square root 10 uh, over 2 approximation factor by just looking at generators of the ideal. But if we look at all the points in the ideal, one of them should be close to the star. So this is something we know. It's just that it usually is not a generator. So what we want is to find this point, which is close to the star. So how we do that? Again, we start the same way. We compute a generator and we project it on H. And so here, bad situation. We're in the middle of two red points. So here the problem is that the log unit lattice is not dense enough. So we have points of the space which are distance square root 10 of every point of the log unit lattice. So what we do is we increase the density of the log unit lattice by taking elements of small algebraic norm. So that means they have a small coordinate on the one axis, and we're going to project them on H. And so when we get a new point, we can also add the log of the unit to this point, and so we get a shifted log unit lattice. And we can do that again and again until we have created sufficiently many points such that uh, the, the density of the lattice is such that for any target, I know that I will have a point at distance at most constant from my target. And so that's, that's what we do. So now I'm calling L this new lattice. So I'm lying, it's not a lattice there because it's just a union of shifted lattices. So how do we make it a lattice? This is the lattice we are going to consider. We consider. So it's in columns. Uh, so we, the first vectors are the units. And then we have the projection of the logarithm of all the elements with small algebraic norm. And to make it a lattice, we add a block with one on the diagonal below uh, the, the elements of small algebraic norm. And the target we, we choose, so the point which we will target in this lattice, is the point with zero on the bottom part and the projection of the logarithm of the generator on the top part. And so this is, um, okay, the ones on the diagonal, they allow us to control the number of times we are going to add an element of small algebraic norm, and we don't want to add them too many times because each time we add this element, we are going to increase the component on the one axis. So if we add too many of them, then we will go far from the star. So this, um, I mean, this solves the two problems, not being a lattice and being able to control the algebraic norm of the solution. And so here we need a heuristic assumption, which is that we are, so we assume that if we take enough um, elem elements of small algebraic norms, so roughly n log n, quasi linear in n, uh, then we assume that the covering radius of this lattice is constant, meaning that for any target point, I can find the point of this lattice at distance, at constant distance from, from my target. So, this, um, this is essentially the algorithm. I'm considering, I'm just solving CVP in this lattice for this target vector. And now the main question is, so remember in CDPR, it was easy to solve the closest vector problem because they had an orthogonal basis. And with the new lattice L I've just shown to you, we don't know of any good basis. So CVP is hard to solve. But the important observation is that the lattice only depends on the ring and not on the ideal. So it's just unit and elements of the ring of small algebraic norm. So we can do some pre-computation on it. And so we are going to use some CVPP algorithm, so closed vector problem with pre-processing. So in the article, we are using the one from La Roven at Sachs 2016. But since, um, since then, new algorithms have been proposed. But asymptotically, they are all the same, so they enable us to so modulo a 2 to the n pre-computation, we can then find an element at distance n to the alpha of the target in time 2 to the n to the 1 minus 2 alpha. And so if I summarize, if I yeah, put everything together, so I obtain in the log space a n to the alpha approximation factor, so in the real space it's 2 to the n to the alpha. 
the query time is two to, to the n to the one minus two alpha. So this is for solving the CVP problem, plus the time needed to compute a generator. So either polynomial time in quantum or two to the square root n in classical setting, and there is a preprocessing for the CVPP algorithm. And so we obtain this figure. And so the, the plateau in the classical uh, setting is because of the computation of the generator, which is two to the square root n. So let me just conclude with uh, the extension. So what I've presented to you was in the case of power of two cyclotomic fields and for principal ideals, but we can generalize that to non-principal uh, ideals, to any ideals, and also to all number fields. So the picture changed slightly. So on the left, you have the case where the discriminant is quasi-linear in the degree. So it's almost the same picture, except that the um, in the classical setting, the plateau is a bit uh, above because the time required to compute a generator in, the, in any number field is uh, 2 to the n to the 2 third. And when the discriminant starts being increasing, uh, being more than quasi-linear in the degree of the field, then the uh, trade-off degrades, and at some point it's no better than the BKD algorithm. And that's all for me, thank you. So, any questions? Ah, so you start from the original lattice and you build this new this uh, new lattice where you will find the the element. Uh, but uh, so, but in uh, in between you had this collection of lattices. So, couldn't you? Why 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 did you need to construct the the, the target lattice and not like look for the element in that collection of lattice oh, of uh, what uh, so you mean yes here compared yeah. to yeah. this uh, yes yeah for example so in fact so here the points I've drawn it's not a lattice because it's a union of lattices so the way we make it a lattice is by yeah. yes but so that's okay. what so there it's not a lattice but your element that you're looking for, it's still there. It's in one of those lattices, no? Uh, yeah. Yeah so, we, yeah, so we are adding, I mean... Um, so you're technically, you don't... It's not, okay, so I'm, I've been lying here. It's not a union of lattices because you also can add uh, R1 and R2. I mean, it's one of the combination of all these points. So you can do linear combination of these points, but not just not too many of them. So you have some limit, but it's not in this union that you will find your point. It's usually, it will be in the linear combination of the points that are drawn there. And so if you want to consider everything, it will become exponentially many lattices. And uh, why that? So you said that for, to, for this algorithm to work, you need uh, ideal lattices, so you, it doesn't work on generic lattices? So uh, that's what you said at the beginning? I yeah, so here we are explicitly using the algebraic structure. We are using the fact that it's an ideal just to compute a generator of it, for instance. So you cannot, like just from a normal lattice, you cannot associate an no, ideal? Uh, no, uh, I mean, an arbitrary lattice does not correspond to an ideal lattice is necessary, no. Hello. Uh, so I would like to know if you have some idea about uh, how sensible to this heuristic is your algorithm. I mean, maybe the, heurist, it, the property that you are requiring is not true for all t, just maybe for some t's, and then would the algorithm still work in this case? So, um, yeah, so it, I mean, what we expect is that the top part of t is somehow uniformly distributed, so it should work. I mean, maybe you c if it works for uh, t's with zero coordinate on the bottom part, but uniformly for any top part, it would be sufficient. But this is a simplification in the case of um, principal ideals, in the case of general, uh, sorry, of any ideal. We also have coefficient on the bottom part, so we essentially need that any uniformly chosen target is close to the point of the lattice. So maybe, so we can re-randomize. So if 
with probability 1 over 2, we are at constant distance, it it's would be enough for us, maybe. Any more questions? So let's thank our speaker again.